Before I get this video started, there's something extremely important that I wanted to point out, uh, and that is that the situation that you're seeing above with my GPU and CPU usage is the situation in which these optimizations will most likely help. For example, if the numbers above were not 98 to 100% GPU usage, and say 20 to 30% or what have you with the CPU usage, then it's, it's fair to say that you are probably experiencing a CPU bottleneck, and these settings may not help you. For example, I've switched FSR 2.1 to ultra performance, and now you can clearly see that there is a CPU bottleneck instead of a GPU bottleneck because my GPU usage is not at 100%, and that 35% usage figure is just from the cores that Tarkov is running on being maxed out, or I should say the threats, but you get what I mean. Keeping this in mind, I hope that the tips in this video help you out, and if they do, make sure to like and subscribe and all that stuff. It really does help the channel grow, and yeah, let's get to the tips. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go down to your search bar here, and then type in graphics, and once you're here, just hit enter for the graphics settings. And one thing that I suggest enabling, though it's not necessarily related to increased GPU performance, is hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This essentially takes high priority tasks off of your CPU and moves them to your GPU, like for example, processing frames, which should in theory improve your performance. I would turn this on, you probably won't see a massive improvement, but I would test it and see what works best for you. For most people, the answer will be on. Secondarily, down here, there's the graphics performance preference. This essentially controls the power plan that is used when you're running a given um, program. So if you'd like to uh, enable this, the thing you're going to need to do is set this to desktop app and then hit browse. And then once you're in here, you're going to want to find where escape from Tarkov.exe is stored. It's probably in your C drive. And once you find that, you're going to want to hit add down here and then click on the exe, go to options and then set it to high performance. Like I said, this is only uh, controlling the power plan, so it won't necessarily net you extra frames or off the bat, but this is something that a lot of people recommend, so I would generally recommend it as well. Though so you will probably not see a, a vast improvement with this setting. The next place we're going to go is going to completely fuck over all the AMD people, and that's the NVIDIA control panel. So you just want to right click here and go to NVIDIA control panel. Uh, if you are an AMD user, I will have timestamps down below so you can skip to like the in-game settings. But we're just going to go right here for all of our uh, NVIDIA brethren. And the first thing we're going to want to do is change this from use my preference to use the advanced 3D image settings. These are the managed 3D settings over here. So you can, you can click take me there and I'll take you here. Or you can just click these settings once you have this checked. This may look like it's recorded after some of this and that's because it is. But you want to make sure... Um, if you want these settings that we're going to be discussing here only to apply to Escape from Tarkov, you need to go to the program settings here and then make sure you select Escape from Tarkov from this drop down. If it's not here, you need to go to add and then find Escape from Tarkov in this list of programs and then hit add selected program. And if it's not here, you're going to need to find it in the files just like we did with the power plant before. I will be using the global settings here just for discussion purposes as it won't have the use global setting distancing it from the setting that's actually on the left so I figured it's a bit easier to read that way and once we're in here there's a lot of uh not controversial settings here but there's a lot of just bull crap surrounding all these settings and that's why i've been very weary of covering uh this section because there's just a lot of hearsay and i don't want to give you guys any false information so i'm going to try to be as not necessarily vague but as uh short as I can just to give you guys some general recommendations. First thing that I would want to just quell off the bat with these settings is the DSR mode here. Uh, and essentially what this is, is it just renders a game at a higher resolution and then fits it to your monitor. This, yes, will increase your GPU usage, but again, it is not necessarily going to give you more FPS. In fact, theoretically, it should give you less, especially if it gets to the point where the GPU is now the bottleneck. So Make sure that this is off because this could be a severe issue if you have it turned on and you don't know about it. Another rumor that I've seen that has actually helped some people, oddly enough, is the anti-aliasing FXAA setting here. Uh, sometimes people turn this on and then have anti-isotropic filtering set to application, or not application controlled, but at 2x here. And they say that helps them get more FPS in Tarkov. You can test this as well as it may just be forcing a lower quality of uh, anti-aliasing and anti-isotropic filtering to improve performance. 
you could test this too and see if it works for you and it doesn't degrade the graphical fidelity of the game that much. Besides these rumors though, the next thing that we're going to be talking about is the image scaling right here. I talked about this in a previous video a long time ago before they added any sort of upscaling to the game. And essentially what this does is it is like AMD's FSR 1.0 except uh, for your entire desktop. I would not recommend using this setting over the upscalers that are in the game, so I'm not going to discuss it. Um, but it can be an option for you if you would not like to use uh, FSR 2.1 for any reason, even though FSR 2.1 is fantastic. And we'll talk about those in a second. Besides that, another controversial topic I'm going to talk about here is low latency mode. This is essentially a predecessor to NVIDIA Reflex. So I generally like to have this on just because it can help reduce the amount of latency in your system. But if you'd rather just have this off and then set NVIDIA Reflex on in the game, it should do the same thing, if not better. But you can have this on and then NVIDIA Reflex on as well. It won't cause any sort of issues. The only thing I'd recommend against with this is setting it to Ultra, as it can induce some CPU bottlenecks with your system, so just keep that in mind. Besides that, the next thing I want to go to down here is Power Management Mode. This is another one where everybody with the EDM in the background blasting is saying to set this to uh, prefer maximum performance. And really all this does is it sets your GPU to be running at not necessarily maximum clocks, but ready to receive frames all the time. So it won't down clock as often and it will not, um, or sorry, will consume more power uh, at idle. So just keep that in mind. If you would rather not have that and keep the temperatures a bit lower, uh, you can leave this at normal. I have it set to normal as well, but again, if you want to have your GPU ready all the time, you can set this to prefer maximum performance. And also, if you're on the program settings and setting this just for Tarkov, then it's a bit less of an impact to have this at prefer maximum performance. Now to shader cache size, uh, essentially what this is is that your GPU caches compiled shaders to your storage. So if you have a fast storage, uh, you can up this a little bit uh, if you have the storage to do so. I did this for a separate game that I was testing, um, but if you don't have the storage or you'd rather not mess with the setting at all, you can set it to the driver default, which I believe is the 5 gigabyte setting uh, for most uh, GPUs. But I have seen some people talking about 10 gigabyte, um, allowing them to have extra shaders cached and therefore giving them better performance, but you don't really need to mess with this. I would recommend anisotropic sample optimizations. It's just one of those things that, as it describes down here, will make all the appropriate texture filtering adjustments based on you know what you have here so if you want the anisotropic filtering to have a bit less of an impact you can turn this on though i haven't seen many people saying that this gives much for performance boost negative lod bias is one of those things that i've looked at and have not found any concrete evidence on some people just say you should set it to clamp for like an extra frame uh but really you can test this and see what works best for you and now to the big kahuna of uh, texture filtering here and that's the quality. Uh, the EDM blasters will also recommend that you put this down to high performance, uh, as this will change the amount of optimizations that are done to textures that are streamed into games. Uh, I really have not noticed any performance boost setting this to high performance. I would recommend testing this for yourself. I leave this at driver default, which is quality. Uh, but it's really your choice. You can test it for yourself. I'm not going to make any recommendation on this because... I haven't seen any concrete proof that, that this even does anything, so I don't want to just tell you to set a setting when I'm not sure if it actually is giving any more performance in the first place. Linear optimization is another one of those. I recommend just throwing it on. Uh, it, the only thing it can do is benefit you, so yeah, just set this on. Uh, it does the same sort of uh, optimization as the anisotropic sample optimization. And when I say same sort, I mean it's just one of those things where it doesn't really hurt you, so... Setting this to on is good. And then there's the threaded optimization. This is one of those settings that's a bit controversial uh, as what it does is it will distribute or the graphics card will attempt to distribute load evenly between the separate cores in your system. Uh, this can cause stuttering issues for some people on certain games. I believe I, when I was looking it up, I saw a, um, a Battlefield uh, Reddit post about this having issues with some older CPUs. So I would test this. This is at auto by default, uh, and you can set this to on or off and then do a benchmark of Tarkov or any other game and see if this helps or does not help you with performance. If it doesn't or you don't see any like 
difference at all. I would just continue to set this to auto. If you do see a negative impact, I would set this to off. And if it does actually help your CPU, you can set that to on. And with that, those are all the settings that are uh, in this NVIDIA control panel uh, 3D settings tab. There are a couple other things that some people recommend, mainly in the uh, adjust desktop size and uh, position down here. Some people say you should set this to no scaling and then perform scaling on display and then override the scaling mode set by games and programs. It's your choice. I have, again, this is something that I've seen no boost in whatsoever. Uh, it can help you out though, so I like to mention anything that can help you out. And then also make sure your refresh rate is set correctly here to the highest one available. And then if you do have a G-Sync monitor, people do say that this induces a little bit of latency. Uh, so if this is not your thing and you just want the snappiest, quickest possible response time, you can set this to off. It really, it's it's splitting pennies at this point. Uh, so it's, it's your choice whether you want to have this on or just decide to have it off if you don't even use it half the time anyway. And then finally, this is just a little bonus note here. On the video color settings, I would uh, recommend to have the dynamic range here set to full instead of limited. And then the desktop color settings up here, uh, you can actually adjust your, like it says in the thing, desktop color settings so that you can get a more vibrant Tarkov without getting banned for using a third party software. But that is it for the settings here. Uh, now let's jump to Tarkov settings real quick and discuss those. Okay, now the biggest things in Tarkov settings that I would make note of. Firstly, uh, I'm going to talk about VRAM settings. So settings that affect the amount of VRAM on your GPU that is being used. Uh, essentially, this is storing stuff for like textures uh, in the game uh, to keep it simple. And if this is maxing out on your card, let's say, for example, you have a four gigabyte card and you're seeing this max out in game, this could be a cause for a lot of the stutters that you might have in it. So the biggest settings that control the usage of this VRAM are particularly texture quality, um, LOD quality a little bit, because uh, that just controls how many things are being rendered. Uh, and then, of course, MIP streaming. I've made a video about MIP streaming already. Uh, to give you the TLDR, if you have a drive that is quick enough to handle it, you can turn this on, bump up these settings, and that should help reduce the amount of VRAM usage. If you want a detailed explanation of that, I will link that video in the description. And then since you have lower VRAM usage using MIP streaming, then you might be able to bump up these texture quality settings a bit more, or many other settings you have here. If you are noticing that your VRAM is maxing out and you can't handle MIP streaming, then I would recommend setting the texture quality lower. I don't like low because it looks like you've smeared butter on every single texture in the game. Uh, so I recommend medium and that will help reduce the amount of VRAM that's being used. As far as more general optimizations go, another thing that can help reduce uh, VRAM usage along with give you more performance in the GPU bottleneck scenario uh, would be the upscalers here, which are DLSS FSR 1.0 and then FSR 2.1. Uh, FSR 1.0 is the neglected child of these three, and I would not recommend it under any circumstance because FSR 2.1 is just a better version of it. Uh, you, FSR 2.1 uses a temporal upscaler, whereas uh, FSR 1.0 uh, is a spatial upscaler which long story short means that the FSR 2.1 has more data to work with than FSR 1.0, giving you a higher quality image. You will only have the NVIDIA DLSS option if you have an NVIDIA 20 series or higher card. Uh, this option can work if you like how DLSS looks over FSR 2.1, but personally, I like FSR 2.1 the most. So if you notice you're in a hard GPU bottleneck scenario, setting this to quality will be a great option to help improve performance, but not reduce the visual uh, quality of your game by that much. Furthermore, uh, anti-aliasing, you must have TAA on for um, FSR 2.1, and having it set to TAA high can help actually improve the look of it with FSR 2.1 on even more. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And obviously I feel like this is pretty self-evident, but HBO um, with uh, ambient occlusion and screen space reflections down here, both of these will chew up graphic card performance, so these are some of the first ones that I'd throw out the door if I was experiencing a hard GPU bottleneck. These are just eye candy, pretty much. And like I was talking about before, uh, having NVIDIA Reflex low latency on is a good uh, option. Just having this set to on plus boost can induce some CPU bottlenecks instead of GPU ones, so it's your choice if you want to push that boundary. It has reduced my FPS by about 10 going to on plus boost, so just keep that in mind. I, I'm in a mostly CPU bottleneck scenario, so... Uh, I keep this on on instead of on plus boost. And then finally, to keep it short, uh, a couple things uh, that are like last ditch efforts. You can lower the resolution if you're experiencing a GPU bottleneck, but I would highly recommend using the upscalers instead of that, uh, as that'll give you a much better image quality 
instead of just straight up lowering the resolution. And also in post FX, of course, as you probably know, these can have an impact on your performance, most particularly clarity, luma sharpen and adaptive sharpen. If you want to test this performance in real time, you can always go into a raid and then adjust these sliders as you wish uh, with the visualize option down here so that you can actually watch your FPS go up or down depending on what settings you take on and off. With that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I tried to I actually re-recorded this because I thought what I was talking about was was too long and too much. So I appreciate you guys sticking through the video. If you guys have any questions or if you want to see me talk about anything else, make sure to leave it in the comments below. I will try to reply to the ones that I can. It's kind of getting a bit too much for me to handle at this point. Uh, but if you have any pressing questions, the Discord is always open, linked at the top of the description. And there are plenty of people there who are willing to help you out. And also, if you didn't like the video, you know what to do. I've said it at the beginning of the video, too. It really does help out uh, in growing the channel. And we're growing pretty fast at this point, so it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out. And since you did hang out, I got a little bonus tip for you. The final quick tip, it's in the registry. Uh, to get here, you want to go to uh, your search. Uh, you can also type uh, Windows R on your keyboard to get to this run here, and then you can type reg edit, and that'll pull up the registry. Of course, I've already got it up, so it's here. And you want to follow this path. I will also have this linked in the description too. And um, then in here, you can actually change the GPU priority and uh, priority for both of these here, you want to set it to the same value that I have set here. So for GPU priority, you want to set this to eight and you want to set priority to six and they both should be checked to hexadecimal. Uh, and then in scheduling category and SFIO priority, you want to set these to HIGH with the capital H exactly how I have it and then hit OK. I don't know the, the full reasons why this helps some people. I've, I'm assuming it's something to do with uh, scheduling priorities and um, input and output priorities. Uh, I've been trying to find some research about it, but it's kind of tough to find. But I know a lot of people recommend it, and it actually has helped some people in my Discord. Um, so I decided to include this here to possibly help some people out who decide to stick to the end of the video. So yeah, with all that out of the way, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. It's Clem, walking out. Later.